so I created this alien creature and I thought I'd do a little commentary about the process of sculpting, creating materials, animations and what I did to implement it in the environment that was my kitchen. I learned a lot myself because it involved a lot of problem solving which was of course mostly the constant pain of trying to figure out photorealism. I wouldn't say I achieved photorealism, but I think I'm quite happy that I at least came close to it. And I think it's amazing that we are living in this day and age where something like this is possible, where basically anybody can create Hollywood-like CGI and VFX as long as they have an internet connection, a half-decent machine, and the time it takes to learn the program. Especially with programs like Blender and DaVinci Resolve, you really don't have an excuse anymore not to do cool shit. So anyways, the first thing I did was, instead of starting from scratch, I downloaded a model from Blendswap. I thought it looked cute and it kinda had that alien character already to it, which was perfect and exactly what I was looking for. But there were some things I didn't like about the model and the animation rig. The rig for the front tentacle things was really hard to control and because I didn't want to face the trouble of re-rigging them and tediously hand animating them, I created a very simple cloth simulation constructed of the least amount of vertices I could get away with, which was then parented to the rig so that they would move with the hat but sort of lag behind and interact with the ground. The next thing was adding detail by sculpting on the mesh itself. I think it was originally way too smooth looking and adding actual bumps and scratches all over the face made it look less uniform I think. and that ended up adding a lot of character and realism, I think. Next I worked on the material itself, which I thought was a little bit too shiny and there were weird artifacts going on where it would reflect this sort of black outline even when there was nothing black in the scene. Overall I wanted it to look more like a crab, but I think it's kind of funny that people can't really decide if it looks scary or cute to them. So, yeah. The legs, I wanted to look more like the hard shell material of a crab or the exoskeleton of an insect. Anyways, I basically just experimented with all kinds of nodes, mostly noise, until I was getting something that looked cool and natural, up until the point where the node setup looked so complicated that I would question my own sanity. I guess that's an ordinary thing for any CG artist. Now, interestingly, I learned that I tend to overdo reflections because I guess it looks cool and it kind of showcases the surface detail of your model more, but it's not necessarily realistic. So that was kind of an eye-opener for me and I think it improved the look and feel quite a lot once I realized that. For the animation itself, it was just a lot of back and forth. So starting big and then going into detail and adjusting the easing. Also I made sure to often animate in arcs because you know most things in nature move in a circular way and also adding little details like uh, how it readjusts its legs once, uh, every once in a while added quite a lot of character I think. Now at this point I think it's quite important to talk about the eyes for a moment. I think it's amazing how much a character can change uh, once you give it more human looking eyes. And it can actually be really really subtle. Like if you for example look at Porks from Star Wars, it may seem like the eyes are just shiny black balls, um, but the character designers made sure to ever so slightly hint that there are in fact pupils, it just makes them more readable. So then also the interesting thing is that you can play with that sort of range. So that's why I think for example for the porks we don't really need that big of an em emotional range. So that's why the designers just, just hinted uh, that there are pupils but they are supposed to look cute and kind of dumb and that's about it. 
plus we as an audience already project our own emotions based on the context of the scene anyways. But let's say for Baby Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, it only makes sense to make him more readable. Of course he also should look cute, but seeing where he is looking at just gives us that slight extra emotional range. Anyways, so for my alien creature I ended up making the pupils quite big. Yeah. When it came to lighting the scene, I was quite lazy to be honest. Normally you should do a 360 HDR with the correct lighting conditions of the scene you want to put your CG element in, but I kinda ended up just using a 360 panorama I shot on my phone. And I always told myself, this is just a placeholder, I will replace it with a more accurate HDR before I render. But yeah, I ran out of time. I think it still worked, especially for the shots I spent a little bit more time on, because I could cheat by adding in extra lights and doing color correction, doing the compositing. But I think where it kind of tells are shots like, like this one. Um, so apart from the perspective seeming kind of off in this shot, even though I did, you know, all kinds of measures and yeah, there's still something that seems off. Um, the other thing that stands out to me is the lighting, because with a window and a small kitchen light coming from screen right, um, them being the main light, the main light sources, I doubt that there would be this much light bouncing from the table to the underside of the alien. And I think that has to do with the fact that I didn't use a proper HDR. Because in real life, the table is actually fairly dark compared to the sky you see through the window. But you know, on a normal photo, the difference in brightness has to fit within the range of, um, of the color space, which in most cases is sRGB which consists of uh, 255 values from black to white. So to get the correct exposure, the camera on your phone adjusts it so that either the window or the room looks normal, but it can't do both. So either the window is blown out or the room is too dark. Now, some phones, including mine, have this HDR feature where an algorithm basically retains the detail for the highlights and the shadows by shooting multiple exposures but when using the photo as an environment map in a CG wall it makes things even worse, right? Because um, it's still in the color space of sRGB meaning it still only consists of 255 values and brightness so suddenly the window almost has the same brightness value uh, than the table which obviously is wrong so yeah, that's why I should have used a proper HDR, but um, yeah, again, I think it, it, it still kind of works fine and for most cases. Now, you can also set your color space in Blender, and I can't stress enough like how, how much difference it made uh, for me, just setting your, your color space to filmic just instantly Im improves and, and makes it seem that much more uh, realistic so and if this kind of information is new to you i i encourage you to watch blender guru's video um the, called the the secret to photorealism um if you haven't watched it yet even if you're not a blender user i think um yeah that's there's some very valuable information in there about photorealism and what it has to do with uh color space right so how long did everything take you? So I finished the script on August 21st and on the 19th of September I uploaded it to YouTube. So it was actually quite fast, I would say. Plus, you know, I wasn't working every single day on on that project. I think for like five days during the time I was also going on vacation uh, to Stockholm for, yeah, for like five days. So how long did it take to render? About 13 days, if you include the accumulated time of the render farm I used. What would I do better next time? I would make the character blink, uh, that's one thing. And in general, add a functioning face rig. 
because actually all the facial animations I did um, was done using shape keys. And while I'm impressed at how well it still worked, um, it's it's just it's just not very flexible, and it's hard to achieve um, complex exp facial expressions just using shape keys. Also, I would get rid of the gravity rig um, in the tentacles and rig it so I could easily animate them. Because although it made things easier when they were sort of being passive and I wouldn't have to worry about them just I could just animate the rest uh, they would just react to the movement and the gravity I think it would still make the alien uh, come even more to life if they were to move on their own so what did I learn I learned a lot about creating materials and also character design you know even though I I started with a base model um, animation, compositing, lighting, and yeah, just, just everything around that as well, like how to plan for a CG shot and how to shoot a background plate. And I would do these little things like wiggle the table from below so the, the toast and the bread box would, would jiggle ever so slightly or, you know, get something red in the shot which would serve not only as, as scale, uh, but also as lighting reference. So just just think about the little things and, you know, th think how to um, implement uh, an element you, you generate in the computer and how to implement that uh, into the real world, right? And, and, and just think about the little tricks you can use to, you know, pull that off, to make that believable. And yeah, in general, I think I really did learn a ton and, and and that in less than a month. I think that's that's yeah, quite quite amazing. And I'm pretty sure that I learned more doing that sort of thing than I would have if I, you know, if I were to have um, watched a tutorial, uh, followed a tutorial or or uh, done a, you know, any online course or anything like that. So it really has been a great, a great learning experience. And I encourage everyone to just start doing stuff, you know, and uh, it, it doesn't matter what, just, just be creative. And it doesn't even have to be in 3D. You don't even have to work digital. Uh, if you want to draw, draw. If you want to write, write. And the only thing that matters is, you know, that you just, you just gotta start. You just gotta start at some point, and um, get a, uh, and don't be afraid that that it has to look good or, or um, or it has to be presentable in the end. You know, because I did some horrible stuff uh, before that I. <laughs> that I never showed anyone and I'm sure that every single um, creator, every single artist uh, has done the, those kinds of projects and, and um, we're, the, we're just embarrassed by, by what they did but um, I think it's important you know, to, to just start and just, just get practice uh, of what it is you, you want to do. So anyway, so yeah, I, I hope that has been informative, entertaining. I don't know. Uh, yeah, just just let me just let me know what you think about it, and any sort of feedback is welcome. And if you want to like the video, then like the video. If you want to dislike the video, then dislike the video. If you want to subscribe, then subscribe. If you, yeah, <laughs> do whatever you want. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.